Minimal APIs is for sure one of the most interesting things that we have seen in .NET in the recent years. Even then, we can see a lot of friction on the adoption, mostly because we are going from a structured, predefined way to one way where you have a lot of freedom and you need to take your own decisions. On this video, we will take one common clean architecture template from controllers to minimal API. To show you this process of refactoring a controller into minimal APIs, I will be using the clean architecture template by Jason Taylor. Make sure you leave a star on the repo as always. And why this template? Because inside of the web UI project, you can find on the controllers folder, a set of controllers that are more than enough for us to have a sense of the different things that we need to consider when we are moving from controllers into minimal API. So we'll start by moving a simple one like this weather forecast. This will be a simple exercise. But also on these to the items, for example, we'll take a look into a more structured approach where we'll be looking into that controller and trying to understand how we decompose it into a feature driven approach using the minimal APIs. So one thing that is important for you to understand is that we'll be doing that by hand without tools and without frameworks. But by the end, I will leave you with a framework that might be extremely useful for you if you are investing into minimal APIs. One thing that is important for me to say is that I will not start doing this type of refactoring if I don't have a safety net on my API. So if I don't have the set of tests that make me comfortable on doing this type of refactoring, I will not approach this lightly. Let's start by doing this with this weather forecast controller. First thing that I will be doing is adding a new directory. So I will create a simple class. You have multiple ways of approaching this thing. I will do one that is quite simple, but gives you the benefit of keeping things organized. Get endpoint. My get endpoint class will be static. And I will have two methods here. One for mapping the endpoint that I will be invoking when I'm defining my application. And the other one will be the execution of that request. Okay, so it will be the method that will be invoked when I receive that request. Let's start by the mapping one. So public static, I will return web application and now I give it a name. I will name it map get weather forecast endpoint and this will be a, an extension method. So I receive here the application and now it's time to register that endpoint. So what you'll be doing, let's open the controllers, weather forecast controller and open them side by side. On the left, we have the definition of our minimal API endpoint. On the right, we have the control. What do I know from this? I know that I have here a get endpoint. So first thing, app.map.get, define the route to that uh, request. And here I'm using the weather forecast that is basically the name of the controller, is a common convention. And also if we go into the base controller, we can see that we are prefixing with API slash. Now what I can do here is providing a Lambda that will execute the request. I prefer to have a specific method for that. So get the sync, let's create that method. And let's start moving things into there. First thing, return type, a sync task, I enumerable the weather forecast. Let's import the missing reference and let's copy the code of the execution. Place this. Basically what this method is doing is sending the request to Mediator. It could be doing a different thing, but it's quite simple. I don't have access to Mediator on this side yet. I need to find a way to have it. If we go into the API controller on the right side, we can see that we are using at the moment this definition to get an I sender. We can see that is being retrieved from the request services. So we can get this through dependency injection. If we can do that through dependency injection, it means that on our minimal API endpoint, that is right here, we can receive it on the map. It's one convention on minimal APIs. So let's just define here, I sender, mediator. Now we write here to mediator.send. So what is missing on this case is invoking this map get method to make sure that this endpoint is now registered on our application. Go to our program.cs and register that thing. Okay, so before we start, let's just remove the weather forecast controller and now let's run the application. The application is running. If we go into this fetch data tab, we can see the request being executed, stopping the breakpoint inside of our uh, minimal API endpoint, as you can see here. And now we have it, let's just send it. And in our application, we have our results. So we have moved 
this request from being handled from a controller into a minimal API endpoint. This was a quite simple one because it was kind of lift and shift. Other things that we can do on this approach. So now let's take a look into one of these more complex use cases. For example, we have this to-do lists controller that has, for example, a get endpoint, a get by ID. We have also a create and an update. If there's a lot of functionality inside of this single controller, how can we decompose this thing? How can we uh, approach this uh, refactoring on this case? Let's take a look into that. And that will work as a model for what you need to do if you are approaching, for example, this as well, the to-do item. So it's more of the same. You have create, you have update, you have lists. It's the same idea. By the way, all the code that we are doing here is accessible for patrons. How I would approach this case. If I look into this, I can see that I have here the context of the to-do list. Okay, it's a domain concept. But then I can start seeing that I have multiple features regarding this thing. I will try to go with a feature-driven approach. If we want to group things related to this domain concept, we can start by creating here a folder named to-do lists. And now I will create subfolders with the features regarding to-do lists. For example, I can have a folder like get to-do list, and that one will be the home of this endpoint. And now we are doing that. Okay, we'll create here a new class that will be our endpoint. And let's do the same approach that we have done for the forecast one. So let's have a method that will register things, that will map them, and then we'll have a second method that will have the execution. Static class and the method map get to the list endpoint. And now let's register the endpoint. Let's find the root for that endpoint. We know we are using the to the lists and that should be here on the base a prefix as well. So we are exposing now a new method that will be the API slash to the lists. And now we have here our get the sync. And once again, let's put them side by side. So on the left, let's have the minimal API endpoint. On the right, let's have the API controller one. Is this one that we are moving? So let's copy the return type. And we do the same. We receive the I sender and then we copy into here the source code of the control. Now we just need to map this endpoint and we go into the program.cs and we just call it. On these cases where we have some endpoints that are related, you may think about if you have a top level folder like this one, you may have here uh, a class that will have a, a static method that will basically do the grouping of that registration. So for example, you can have here a map to the list endpoints and that map to the list endpoints will call each endpoint individually to do that mapping, and then you just invoke once on the program.cs. One thing that is missing is this authorized tag. I need to define in my minimal API on this side that this endpoint requires authorization. So what, how do I do that? I go here and I say require authorization. So now let me just do the same approach for these other methods offline, and by the end I will explain you what I've done for all of them. Okay, so now I have them all, and as you can see, the approach was this one. I have one folder for each endpoint, so in fact, I have each feature under one folder. Ideally, if this template had, for example, models for each controller, for each endpoint, I will keep those models together inside of that folder. On this case, I'm not doing that, because on the template for Clean Architecture by Jason Taylor, what happens is that the models are in form of comments and queries inside of the application layer, so I'll not be doing that. But what you should do instead is having those contracts together with the endpoints, so you stick them together in the same folder to keep the feature together. So what are the main differences from what you have seen so far? If we go into that to the list controller, you can see here some small things that we need to take care. For example, let's take a look into this get by ID. So we go here, it's quite easy to find. So get to the list by ID endpoint. Let's open them side by side. And the main differences are not only the routing, since we need to provide the ID, but also that if you take a look, I'm returning an I result instead of a file result, and I'm doing a results.file. So on the minimal APIs, if you need to return a file, you will do that this, this way. Another example that we can take a look is the update one. Here we are returning the bad request for an action result. 
And on this case, it's kind of the same thing with the files. So we have return type of I result. I'm doing results dot bad request. Then besides that, you have here all the endpoints for that feature. Once again, we could move that into a different file together with the group of features. We went through a process of moving our controllers into minimal API endpoints that we have a lot of freedom and we can shape this thing as we wish. Obviously, we don't take some of the advantages of the conventions that already exist when you create something using controllers. If you are interested on using minimal APIs, but still having a kind of pattern and convention-based approach, I highly recommend you to take a look into Fast Endpoints. That is an amazing open source project that once again, makes sure you leave a star. As always, if you want to see me exploring things like Fast Endpoints or any other topic regarding minimal APIs, make sure you leave a comment down below. And if you want to see how to take this feature-driven approach a step further, make sure you watch this video right here. I will see you soon, and in the meanwhile, just keep it simple.